evening. Um, this is the first meeting we've had of this particular zoning board, of our West Zoning Board. So I wanted to say welcome, everybody, for being here. I appreciate your time uh, this evening and uh, ask for for some grace from the audience to give us a few minutes to go through some housekeeping items this, this evening uh, before we get started on the, uh, the application. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out to you, though. In your or on your dais is a list of the addresses and the contact names of all the other zoning board members. Uh, we discussed that at our orientation meeting last night, so that way you do have that uh, available to you. Uh, the next item I wanted to have the the secretary read a, a brief Zoom statement before we get started. This meeting is now being recorded. Please silence all electronic devices. This meeting is being held in the board hearing room with zoning board members attending in person. There is also an option for virtual attendance on Zoom webinar. If you are using Zoom, you may participate in the meeting using your computer, telephone, or other electronic device. For Zoom participants, chat will be disabled once the meeting begins. If you have trouble with Zoom, please call 913 7159666 If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand function in the Zoom app to notify planning staff of your desire to speak. To activate this function, click raise hand in the webinar controls at the bottom of the screen. By telephone, you may raise your hand by dialing star 9. Please do not utilize the raise hand function until the start of the agenda item about which you desire to comment. We will take comments from in-person attendees first, followed by Zoom participants. The moderator will call on individuals who have raised their hand. When it is your turn to speak, the moderator will recognize you by the name or phone number used to join the Zoom webinar, and your microphone will be unmuted. Please state your name and the city and state where you reside for the record, followed by your comments. All public speakers will be limited to three minutes unless the chair designates a different time period in order to accommodate all the speakers. If you share concerns, comments, or points made by others, please refrain from repeating those comments and instead note for the record that you agree with the previous individual's comments. The chair may modify these procedures as needed to conduct an orderly and efficient meeting. For board members, staff, and presenters, Please state your name every time you begin talking, and please speak into the microphone so that the people attending via Zoom can hear you and so the comments can be transcribed for the record. This is a public meeting. We are presenting live and recording the meeting. Thank you, Ms. Secretary. Appreciate that. Okay, the first item for, for uh, business this evening Um and since we're all here, we probably should do a roll call first. John DeGrand. Present. On Zoom, Terry Atwell. Here. Donna Getzman. Present. Roger Spears. Present. Jeff Huff. Present. Craig Connell is absent. And Bob Paulson. We have a quorum. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Secretary. The first item uh, on our agenda this evening is uh, item A, the election of officers. So with that, that's why I'm kind of chairing the meeting temporarily. <laughs> and I will turn it over to our chairman after that person is, is elected. Uh, in accordance with the, the bylaws, the chair is elected on an annual basis uh, at the first meeting of June. And so obviously we didn't meet meet that quite quite yet at the um, um, with the, the new zoning board. But at this time, I'll take nominations to the floor for the chair of the West Zoning Board. Bob uh, Paulson, a minute, Jeff. Oh, ahead, I Terry. will second. You know I me, mean? Jeff Huff. Huff. Okay. Any other nominations from the floor? Oh. Okay, can I get a second? Uh, Terry Atwood, second. Okay. 
then we will we'll vote for no other nominations. We'll vote for a chair. All in favor of that, please say aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations, Mr. Chair. Thank <laughs> you. Trump, you are a new chair. Uh, you do much. you want to do the the vice chair, or do you want me to? Um, you, you go ahead and do it. I'll, I'm going to okay. continue to observe for just okay. a second. I'm a little out of practice, as you all can tell. Through. So, okay, so we have we've elected a chair. Uh, the next step of business is to elect a vice chair. Same um, term, the the vice chair, according to the bylaws, is a one year term. Uh, we'll have the annual annual election at the first meeting in June of every year. So, with that, I'll take nominations from the floor for the vice chair. Terry Atwell, I nominate Craig. I'll second that. Okay, so it's been nom nominated and seconded. Who was or the second? That's Craig Connell, correct? Correct. Yes, okay. please. Any other nominations from the floor? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we have a vice chair. So, Congratulations, Chair Chairman Huff, and our Vice Chair, Mr. Connell. I uh, appreciate both of your your service on this this board, and uh, I, I think we have a, a lot of uh, exciting cases coming before you. Um, Mr. Chairman, do you want me to continue, or would you like to, do you want to step in from here and get on the agenda, or what would you like to do? Let, let me give a try here, and then okay. you will correct me as we go, so... <laughs> Um, the next uh, agenda item is to adopt the zoning board bylaws, and uh, we reviewed those last night. They were presented to us, and at this point, uh, I would like to take a vote to make uh, to um, adopt the zoning bylaws that we reviewed yesterday evening. Uh, all of those that agree to accept the bylaws, you need a second, huh? You get a second you on need that. To, oh, you need to ask. Move to move to approve. I'll move, move to, to approve. approve. I'll second. Donna gets them. Therefore, we have a uh, a motion and a second, and uh, then we will go for the vote. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. So all of those in favor of accepting the bylaws uh, say aye. 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 Any of those opposed say nay. Appears that we have all eyes. Okay. That is accepted. And Mr. Chairman, just one other note, Jay Leipzig, this is a template document that we've we've standardized with all of our zoning boards. It is a great resource for you. So any questions you have about procedures um, or uh, on, on anything pertaining to this board, that is a great reference document. So I'd encourage you to look at that anytime uh, with any, any questions you might have. Okay. Um, the next agenda item is to add or delete, revise, approve the agenda. Um, if there is there any motion to make any changes to the agenda? None. 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 Uh, okay. I'll okay, take that to a vote then. All of those approved? Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, no opposition to that. Um, at this point, the next agenda item is disclosure of conflicts of interest. Uh, at this time, uh, I would like to find if anybody would like to disclose or have any uh, reason that they would need to disclose uh, any contact or anything to this, uh, to what we're reviewing tonight. Um, None. 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 We don't have to vote on that, do we? <laughs> I'm catching on pretty quick here. This is pretty good. Uh, takes me a second. Uh, and then a, a disclosure of external contacts or discussion. Uh, does any board member uh, need to uh, address this? None. None. Okay. Then we'll move forward. Um, the next agenda item would be approval. Of the minutes, uh, since we have not had a meeting up to this point, uh, there is no need to approve the minutes on this one. Uh, next month, we will do that. So, okay, board reports. Uh, the Board of County Commissioners' actions uh, 
Is that Sean? Are you going to do that yes. for us? Okay. Yes, thank you. you. Chairman Sean Penley, County Planning Staff. I will note, uh, give an update for both board, board of County Commissioners actions and Planning Commission actions. There were no Board of County Commissioners actions for this board since this is the first meeting for the new West Consolidated Zoning Board. I will note for planning, and just for your reference in the future, what we will try to do as staff is give an update on previous actions that were considered by this board and let you know what happens when the final action is brought before the Board of County Commission. So we'll let you know what happens in those cases. In some cases, maybe it may need to be remanded and brought back to you. Other times, it just goes on to BOCC and we'll let you know what happens. So that's this point of this board report. Uh, I could uh, continue with the Planning Commission actions. The only thing to note, there was no planning commission meeting in July, but just like with this board, uh, there were new board member uh, commissioners appointed for the planning commission, and they were uh, appointed and approved at the same date uh, as your board last Thursday for the BOCC. Uh, the next planning commission meeting will be next Tuesday, August 22nd, and the meeting is in this room at 545. They will consider similar actions as you as a, adopting their bylaws for the planning commission. Uh, in addition, there will be a discussion item regarding non-conforming parcels. So we'll we'll provide an update to you at the next zoning board meeting next month um, to let you know what discussion there was at that meeting in that time. There's nothing scheduled for action on that meeting, but we just wanted to bring you up to date on that. Uh, and that concludes uh, board reports. Happy to answer any questions. Um, does the board approve the information that we've been provided uh, by Sean? Oh, no. There's okay. no need no, to. No, no need okay. to. No need to um, motion or approve those. There we it's go. Just, just an okay. Idea. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thank I'll you, very Paulson. Much. I do have a question for you, Sean. Um, you were talking. Uh, you mentioned something about non-conforming parcels. Can you explain just a little bit on that, please? Sure. I will try to do my best. I know uh, Terry Atwell has some familiarity with this, and this was actually discussed at the last meeting for the Southwest Consolidated Zoning Board, there was a member of the public that showed up to speak on this issue. In 2018, staff had presented some information regarding the situation. Essentially, what we're trying to talk about is non-conforming parcels are those parcels which would be another word, uh, another, um, I guess a description would be illegal parcels. Those meaning that they're parcels that were not legally subdivided or platted, but were possibly created by deed or other type of subdivision that wasn't recognized by our current regulations. We're a situation as they are, property owners can keep their properties the way they are regardless of how they're divided. However, if a property owner is wishing to build on those properties that are considered non-conforming, they would need to be platted or uh, approved for subdivision. Uh, so sometimes there's a request for a building permit on those properties, and it becomes a problem if they were not properly platted. So we'll be discussing that with the Planning Commission and getting their input at that meeting next week, and then we could report back to the zone. It may result in amendments to our regulations if the Planning Commission recommends that staff proceed with some type of amendment. So that's kind of a high-level view of what that issue is. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. All right. Um, Moving to the next uh, agenda item is uh, business before the board. Uh, at this point, uh, we have an application. Um, and then I'm going to, at this point, introduce the applicant. Is that correct? Or do you? Um, no, Mr. Chair, just, just uh, if you'd like, I would introduce the, the planner. Michelle Leininger uh, can review the case with, with the board. Okay. Um, if you would just read the um, letter A into the okay. record, that way um, that is official. we all know what's okay. going on. That would right. be great. Thanks. So the application number W23-304-CUP, LE Conditional Use Permit 30450 West 143rd Street. Um Amy Doshol is the applicant and landowner request a CUP renewal for a drive through Halloween event, Jack's Hollow, on 30 acres on property zoned rural district in section 35, township 12, range 22. Good evening, Michelle Leininger, county planning staff. Um, this is a project, it's a renewal. Um, so I'm going to give some background information since um, this was previously heard by our Northwest Zoning Board. So 
this is all new to everybody. Um, this, this project has some history. Um, so I'll go through a little bit of that. <clears throat> um, here's the subject property. Um, again, it's a renewal for a conditional use permit for a drive through Halloween event for fundraising for the Secret Santa organization. Um, it occurred, it's proposed to occur yearly on weekends in October. Um, this shows the location of the parcel outlined in blue. Um, it's along 143rd Street west of Gardner Road. This event initially occurred in 2021 where it was overwhelmingly successful. Um, it, which caused uh, traffic issues, it caused trash issues. It was, you know, a, one of those positively messy kind of things. Um, last year, the applicant brought a CUP before us um, for the event. Um, we, we, we really worked together to try to brainstorm things to to do to help it run better, to not have traffic issues, to not um, cause issues with the neighbors, things like that. Um, so more traffic control was provided, signage, trash pickup, and a reservation system was utilized. So here is the area of the property. Um, you can see the drive, which is outlined in red. That's the, the driveway where the haunted hollow occurs. Um, they have volunteers that um, haunt along that uh, driveway. There's different um, areas set up with different settings and such. Um, and then the blue area is a parking area. Um, there are some where you see those two buildings. Those There are some... Um, areas set up, displays set up there. People can park in the parking area, go to those displays, get some candy, take some pictures, and then um, go along their way. It's an optional thing. You can just drive through, carry on. Um, typical visitor would visit the site from the east um, off Gardner Road. And then when they leave, they are sent to the west to avoid conflicts and uh, traffic congestion. Um, the event is proposed for every Friday and Saturday in October, depending on weather, um, from 6 to 10 p.m. Here's some pictures that uh, we took from last year. Uh, Sean and I visited the site both during the day and um, in the evening during one of the events. Um, so that's what some of these pictures are. This is the entrance, what you see um, off the road. And then here's some um, pictures of the traffic control along 143rd Street and then the driveway um, through the site. These are, this is a little hard to read, but um, just to give a, a general description these are the the stipulations from last year um it was approved for a one-year term to see if the proposed changes made a difference it was kind of a trial year um the applicants utilize a website called sign up genius for visitors to make reservations for half hour time slots no more than 30 time slots per half an hour were offered in order to limit the number of vehicles on site and queuing on the road at any one time um this total of 240 vehicles uh, per night and um, details on utilizing the registration system was provided on their social media. Volunteers conducted the traffic control. As you saw in the one picture, there was um, various people out by the entrance. They all had um, reflective vests on, flashlights. Um, signs were posted on site notifying traffic uh, that the driveway is two lanes and to keep right. Um, my experience driving through the site, people, you only passed a couple of people and people were really good about spacing out, moving over. So it wasn't a constant stream of two-way traffic on those areas. Um, no parking signs were posted along 143rd Street to discourage parking on the road and walking into the site. The site is intended for driving through. 
Trash receptacles were provided in the parking and walking areas, and 143rd Street was to be cleaned up by noon the day following the event. Um, portable toilets and hand sanitizer stations were provided um, near those two buildings I had described. Uh, no accessory buildings were utilized for the public event. Um, this was something that was pretty important to our um, building codes folks and fire folks. Um, it was it would be a lot to make those buildings um, usable for the public. So nobody's allowed, no, the public is not allowed in those buildings. Um, planning staff received no complaints regarding the event last year. Sheriff's Office stated that uh, there were no dispatch calls to the address or to the area, mainly the intersection of Gardner Road and 143rd. And um, also stated that it went much better this year than it had the year before with the use of that um, registration system. We also received a comment by email, and you have a copy of that in front of you. Um, and Terry, I didn't forward this to you, but generally um, it's from Renee Schmidt, which is she lives at 30880 West 143rd Street. Um, she commented, um, generally it says that 2021 event was not good, but the changes made for last year were great. Um, they would also like to see a two-year time frame versus the requested 10-year time frame. Okay, thank you. Um, staff does recommend approval of the conditional use permit. Staff is recommending a five-year time frame just to kind of limit that, um, give them some extra time to, to get going with it, but also, you know, be able to revisit it within a reasonable amount of time. And then um, to limit of 304 vehicles per night, um, the applicant did state that they didn't quite reach their maximum um, at all at the night, pretty close. Um, and had requested more slots. We kind of picked something in the middle to make it a little more manageable for the streets and the and the neighbors around there. So we proposed a limit of 304 vehicles per per, per night, which is 38 vehicles per half an hour. So it is an increase uh, of eight vehicles per half an hour through the site. Um, there are um, additional stipulations which are. Uh, pretty much what was approved last year with the exception of these two changes. Um, and those are outlined in the staff report. Um, staff does recommend approval of that. And I do have a suggested motion for you. And this is a public hearing item. So you will need to um, open the public hearing and take public comment. Okay. Do we uh, do that before? Uh, Terry Atwell, do we do that before we ask you questions, Michelle? Uh, this is Sean Penn. I think we can open the public hearing after any questions of after staff the presentation, yeah. or and after the applicant. Typically, after the applicant speaks, then we open up the public hearing, and okay. there should be a motion for that to open up the hearing. Okay. So, Thanks. Before, like, so what am I understanding is that then we'll. At this point, the well questions of the zoning board. I think it'd be appropriate now for if the zoning board has any questions of staff first, ask staff for any questions. And then if you don't have any questions for us, we would ask the applicant to speak. Okay. Then uh, at this point, if the staff, is there any additional information that you would need that, to provide? That's the end of my presentation. Okay. So if you have any and questions. And then of the address. zoning board. Yeah, is this there... is Terry Atwell, oh, Michelle. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not tracking with you. Terry's asking. Okay. This is Terry Atwell. Michelle, I have some questions for you. Sure. Um, so, you know, I live in that area, and I know how pitch black those roads get at night. Um, like, I really don't feel like, yeah, I th feel like it's a safety issue. Um, if they have volunteers out in the roadway, regardless of whether they're wearing vests and have flashlights, if we were to pass this, 
um, with allowing them to have volunteers out in the roadway and something happens to one of their volunteers, are we going um, to be held liable if someone was to get hurt? That's um, my first Yeah. I guess if our legal staff wanted to chip in, if there's anybody on there, um, I do know they have, it, it's not dark, dark right there. Cause there's, there's um, different lights and things out there. Um, I don't know that we would be liable. No, uh, this is Ryan. My Hager. question would uh, be also is staff, Ryan Hager, I wanted to provide comments. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, there would be no liability in the situation. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, uh, as a, a governmental body uh, uh, executing your, your duties, uh, th there's no liability that that attaches for for conducting the, those specific activities. Uh, so no, there would there would be no liability. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Um, and then another thing, Michelle, I kind of wanted to clarify this because under the public safety portion. Um, you have that 143rd Street is a chip and sealed surface road. And I mean, you are correct that from Gardner Road westbound to Kill Creek, it is um, a chip and sealed uh, surface. But from Kill Creek uh, westbound to Spoon Creek, it, it is not chip and sealed, and neither is Kill Creek Road. So I just want to clarify that because if you read this, you get the impression that the entire 143rd Street is chip and sealed. So that was just a point I wanted to make. Hold on. I'm still going through my um, a couple of other clarifications here. I'm sorry. I'm sitting in my in my car. Um, on. The it looks like one of the pages that the applicant might have sent in where they talk about their dates of operation, hours of operation, parking and the buildings. And Michelle, you mentioned that nobody goes into any of the outbuildings. Is that your understanding? That's correct. That's one of the stipulations um, of approval that no public is permitted into those buildings. Okay, but it, unless I'm misunderstanding this, and please correct me if I'm wrong, under the fire plan and fire access, the way I'm reading this is that uh, the displays are arranged around the interior walls of the barns, leaving a very open space in the middle. There are no hallways or closed off spaces. Um, so right, no. And that's, that's, I think, left over from um, the previous proposal. That was initially um, an idea and that um, this is their narrative. And that is something that um, we're not permitting is okay. um, is public in those buildings so that would well, not be that, applicable that, that, should, that should have been stricken out of there then because that that's you know was concerning to me um okay i think that's all i have for you then i just wanted those clarifications thank you michelle this is roger spears um on your uh page nine item four um the extent of detrimental effects to nearby parcels should should um, should the use be approved. Um, everything has said vehicles up to this point. In this item, it says visitors. I believe that there are four places there that the word visitors should be changed to vehicles. You're correct. Because if if you get someone that's disgruntled, they could stand at the entrance and count heads in vehicles get up to your your um, 304 and raise a stick and, and say that's all that can come in and it is correct in the recommended stipulations it does say vehicles 
the recommended stipulation. Page 12. Well, that should not say visitors. This The recommended stipulations on page 12 is correct with 38 vehicles, total of 304 vehicles per night. Okay. And one other item uh, in your proposed motion, it's a period of five years. This may be a, a, a technicality, but the approval is going to be during the month of September. And I think the intent there is that it would be for a period of five years, including the events in that fifth year. It's five years from the approval date of the Board of County Commissioners. Okay, then then they would only have four years of events because that fifth year is in... No, it, well, the event's in October. Right. Yeah, the event's but, in but the, the uh, approval would be in September. In September. September. So uh, I think you would need to say after the five-year term, something to the effect of including the fifth-year event. If you would like to change that in the motion to clarify, that would be fine. Okay. Um, Do you? I don't think it's necessary. It would be for 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Yeah, th this is shut in and the planning staff. That, that's a good question. We don't typically get into that specific stipulation. We, as uh, Michelle recommended in the normal approvals, it's always the date of this, the term of the CUP is always determined from the date of approval by the BOCC. You are correct that there wouldn't actually be five years of approval under as it is proposed. But the board can always recommend a shorter or longer term of the CUP and actually extend it another month if you <laughs> felt that that was appropriate. That's certainly your prerogative to do that. You can make that recommendation. As staff has stipulated it, we're just saying five years from the date of approval by BOCC. It's up to the board what you would like to recommend, then it could go forward to the BOCC. Okay, thank you. You can always amend the stipulation. Yeah, right. Th thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, yes, John DeGran. Michelle, uh, you know, they are sending people out to the West. My question would be, how many of those people start down that road and go, oh, I don't want to be going into nowhere because that basically does start going into a much more true rural part. How many of them turn around in someone's drive and go back the other way. I don't know if you have any idea of. Um, that may be a question better um, answered by the applicant. Um, you know, they're sending them that way. Uh, likely they would go that way and turn south on the nearest road. Um, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> I, and I, I mean, it, yeah. is the turning them to the west a hard and fast rule? I mean, are they... Are they required to turn them west? Okay. So if somebody that's, goes, that's somebody just goes, was their plan. Well, I yeah, it's not required by staff. That's not part of the stipulation, but that's that's what they did last year. Sounds good, but I can see a lot of people turning around and I'm, neighbors drive. Go, I don't want to go down here. It's getting darker. And and they've tried to do some of those things to prevent those things. Um, there's a couple of pictures of the signage in, in the staff report um, to encourage them to keep going um, and not turn around. But, you know, after you get further down the road, there's, um, you can't stop people from doing it. Thank you. Yeah. Bob Paulson, I wanna kind of, uh, piggyback onto that a little bit. Um, just my curiosity, I was heading into Gardner today. I thought, okay, I got a little extra time. Let's drive there, right? So a half a mile past them, um, Waverly Road goes to the north about 300 feet and dead ends into two driveways. Um, you go another half a mile, you get to take Kill Creek to the south, as Terry mentioned, all gravel. Um, you go another, and I didn't go on down farther, but um, I think the next one would be Four Corners. 
Spoon Creek first. Spoon Creek doesn't go south. Yeah. Yeah. So so, so you're looking at, at at several miles going west really before they have an opportunity. And I'll guarantee these people that are driving there from in town that plugged in their home for your GPS is telling them to make a U-turn about every 20 feet. Um, living next to, uh, I will call it an attractive nuisance. Um, I have on busy weekends, many, many, many turnarounds in my driveway and it can't be helped. And it does anger me, but um, I would almost rather see trying to just divert them back to the east if that would work because they hit that stop sign at Gardner Road and they can go anywhere they want. And they don't get frustrated and their GPS is going to pick up on it and it's going to get them out of the rural area faster. Just my thoughts on it. Um, it's not stipulated. Right. Um, that was just their idea. If you want it done a specific way, that can be added to the stipulation um, or that can just be a suggestion to the applicant. Um, but yeah, it, the the thing that that we try to remember in this staff report is that it's Friday and Saturday, 6 to 10 in October only. So it's a very limited, finite amount of time. It's not... Um, it's not a year round, you know, four days, the end of the week kind of situation. So um, our thought is that it's a, it's a short period of time. I'm, I'm not arguing. I, no, I'm I understand your point. Any. Sure. Mr. Chairman, Sean Penley planning staff. I would just add additional comment to that. The applicant can further clarify this, but if I recall at, at last year's a, approval for the CUP, part of the, reasoning for that recommendation or, or for the applicant's proposal to divert traffic exiting traffic to the west on 143rd was to improve traffic flow in and out of the driveway and to limit any potential backups or problems with traffic going back east certainly there can be traffic that goes east and it's not as michelle noted it's not stipulated but the applicant can probably clarify again better how the operation works and maybe explain that further A point of information, um, the uh, five-year period, you've um, you've approved 304 vehicles. Uh, the applicant asked for sig significantly more. Is the What's the procedure if they, it, let's say this year goes swimmingly, it goes great. They have no problems. They hit their peaks or, or just under their peaks and everything goes great. And they want to go to... 320 next year do they have to reapply for the permit or is what's how does that work it they would have to come for an amendment so it would be a similar process again to so it would amend. come back to the zoning board as an amendment to the cup yes and we'd have to go through the same process we're going through now okay. to thank amend you. those stipulations thank you mm -hmm. question uh following up on that um could that amendment be if that's we go that uh, extend the term of the CUP as well, or would that be a new CUP if at that time? Um, we typically don't do that until it's I, revised until it's getting close to the um, expiration time. Okay. Um, but yeah, any of the stipulations can be amended at any time by going through the same process again. Hey, Michelle Terry Atwell, again, um, I, I do, this would have to be a question um, for you um, just because of some uh, things that I saw on uh, their Facebook page um, regarding the uh, car counts. Can we put out, um, can we have Public Works put out a counter basically at the drive to get an, an accurate um, car count 
because I noticed that they said that their average was about 167 cars on their uh, biggest night. But when I went to even see what Jack's Hollow was on Facebook, I um, saw where the um, sign-up sheet, everybody was saying that the sign-up sheet was full. Um, and then could they get on a backup list? And it looked to me like every single one of them was then told, hey, you can still go ahead and come on out between 7 and 9.30. So I just want to make sure that we're getting accurate counts. And I didn't know if, um, you know, there we could do some type of a, a road counter. Um, that's not something that we have ever done before. It It's like any other business. It's on an honor system. And typically if you're, if you're getting more than what the site can handle, that's when you're running into traffic issues. The sheriff knows about it. We have other things going on. So at that point, it would kind of trigger the revocation process that is in the code. But um, Sean, did you want to add yeah, to that? Yeah, thanks, uh, Michelle. Sean Penley, planning staff. Uh, Ms. Atwell, I would say that Public Works is not here this evening, unfortunately, but I don't believe that that would be something that the Public Works Department would do. Although they do traffic counts on streets, my guess is that even if they were to place some type of a counter out on the street, the confusion would be, it would be hard to distinguish what is traffic that is normally happening on 143rd and what traffic is happening and distributed and generated just by the Jack's Hollow active uh, traffic. So my guess is that it would not do any good to put a traffic counter out there. And I, and I don't know if Public Works would be open to that anyway. And I would add into there, you're you're also getting traffic in and out of the site from their volunteers. Um, Sean and I went through the site, two separate vehicles. So I'm not sure that you would get a real accurate count um, as far as putting it right at the site um, entrance. All right. Any other questions at this point? Okay. Uh, at this point, we would uh, welcome the applicant uh, to give a, their presentation and just give us an overview of the proposal and uh, comments, and then we'll uh, to the staff report. Okay. My name is Tammy Doshall. I live at 30450 West 143rd Street. That's in Gardner, Kansas. Um, it's our private land many years ago, I think it was 1994, we just had a Halloween party one night a year because we love the fall. We love Halloween. Our family is, yeah, pretty crazy about Halloween stuff. <laughs> um, but after a few years, um, it grew and grew. I mean, we literally started out with some carved pumpkins and a bonfire. Uh, but we always wanted to donate toys to um, toys for tots. And people used to say, I can't believe you don't charge because I make a hundred pounds of chili and you know, all that. And it become quite the event, the one night a year. But when COVID started, um, we thought, how are we going to get our toys? Because everybody would, for the party would bring a new toy and we would donate them to toys for tots. But then we found a woman in Gardner who run a group secret Santa. And one year we donated everything to her. So we, um, in 2020, when we had COVID, we thought, oh, we can't have our party. How are we going to get toys? So we come up with the drive through They just drive through, hand us the toys. If they couldn't hand us a toy, that was fine too. We don't charge. We have never charged for anything. Um, matter of fact, we spend a lot <laughs> um, because we do do hot cider and candy for the kids. So if they do want to get out and take pictures by some of the type props that we have there by the barn or in front of the house, they get out and take a picture, they get some hot cider, they get candy, all free of charge. Um, if they can leave a cash donation, they do because when you get a lot of toys donated, you get for young children. But we provide toys from um, zero to 17. So we usually will use that cash to buy for teenagers, you know, um, makeup and makeup brushes or footballs or whatever for the teenagers. So 
in 2020, it was extremely successful. And we had no idea that it would blow up the way it did. We didn't advertise. We literally on our Facebook said, page said, well, we're going to do a drive through instead. And um, how it exploded like that, we're not for sure, but it did. And so it did cause difficult for the neighbors. Um, and every night we actually got a little better at trying to control things. So when we applied for this and um, come up with all the things to keep it under control with signing up, I had never heard of sign up seniors, but it did really work well. And almost too well because we were allowed 240 cars. But, you know, any event, when someone signs up for it, they sign up a month or so advance. They forget something else comes up. We only had like the first night 126 cars. So it very much limited the amount of things we were getting so we couldn't provide for as many children. Um, that first year in 2020, we provided a very nice Christmas for children who would have got nothing, um, about a thousand children. Last year it was around 700. So, um, and it's very much a family oriented event. It is not a party. It is not a brawl. It is car loads come with their children and most of them are in pajamas because they're then going to go to bed when they get home. Um, the ones that get out, you know, some of them they'll have their costume, Halloween costumes on. Um, and so having the signed up genius helped. I mean, I, I help is not even a good word for it. It kept it very much under control where we did not have any line. And the most people, there would be two or three cars. It's because someone else was coming out for that part. So, and the gentleman that um, him and his wife do the traffic, he actually works for the sheriff's department. He really knows what he's doing. So it's not just some general person standing out there that goes, you know, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, and that their volunteering was like so great. And they're, they did a great job. So we really did keep it under control. Um, it went very well. I made so many signs. It was ridiculous. I had them all the way up Gardner Road, no parking at each person's driveway. No, no blocking a driveway. I mean, I made signs all the way. And the neighbor that is not very happy about this, I tried to do everything I could to um, make it better for her. I made lots of signs for the front of hers. And I put rope across that had signs, no turning around, no parking. I kind of went overboard. There was a lot of signs. I was trying to prevent any problems uh, trying to keep everybody happy. And I, I believe it went very well last year. Um, it was very under control. We got still a nice amount of toys. We were able to do 700 kids. So we are hoping that this can go for five years because just the stress of having to do all this, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we don't have to do this every year because I think we shown last year that all the changes that we did and each night we even would change things like, okay, what do we, I have one, my best friend, she literally sat with a counter and counted every car. That's how we got our car count. Well, she sat there and counted every car. So we would get an idea of how many people did come through. And that's how we know the exact numbers because she, that's all she did was count cars. And that first night it was 126 cars. Um, we did have later and, and further in, you know, and this is only seven nights out of the entire year. One of those nights, we don't have it on a Saturday night. The third Saturday of each uh, in October, we have our own personal party for our family, our friends, our volunteers. Um, and that's just a private party. It's not the drive through. So it's actually only seven nights. Um, so I'm, I don't know if you have any questions. I mean, I'm willing to ask anything I possibly can. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, do any of the board members have any questions? Okay. <laughs> Hey, uh, Terry Atwell, I do. Um, uh, first, I kind of want to uh, make a statement because I, I want you to know I really love your mission. Um, uh, your heart's in, in the right place. I, I love, um, you know, what you guys are doing. Um, you know, my only concern is about, you know, the track it, traffic safety and, um, you know, double the numbers seems kind of significant uh, to me. I'm thinking maybe we can maybe work with Michelle and maybe do kind of a, a stair step if our board is on board unless they want something else. 
but you know, you had no issues last year and uh, I, I definitely want to see that uh, street continue. Um, because again, I, I really love what you guys are doing. So um, we'll see what everybody else has to say. And then maybe we can come up with a, with a good solution for everybody. Well, we had 240 we were allotted in the uh, sign up genius and uh, Michelle, didn't you put 304? So that's not doubling. That's just raising it by. Um, the request was for almost double. Yes. Um, we limited it to yes. the 304, which was an additional eight people per half an hour. Right. So, and it was almost dull. <laughs> I mean, we had, where's everybody at kind of thing. And towards the end, I did say, I had people messaging me on my personal page. Hey, we live in Gardner. I said, yeah, come on out because I'm personally inviting you <laughs> and it is my land. So there was not very many people. So there was plenty of room for someone to come through. So when they say, um, when we said on Facebook, yeah, come on out because there was plenty of room. I mean, there was literally no cars out there because if you know our driveway is a half mile long so a lot of cars will fit on a half mile and there was very spread out so um the 304 is not going to you know i so, would so my understanding is is that you even if you had personally invited them they still did it did not exceed your amount. no it it did no it did not because we counted every car that come through so we didn't count do we know you or did i personally invite you um yeah so it really an average of 167 cars and we were allotted 240 and that was the busiest night so um at the end, those last two weekends, I said, when people were now at first, I went, no, I'm sorry, you're going to have to have reservations. But they go, well, I'm so and so I know I went, well, just come on out. You know, my personal friends or someone who's friends on my Facebook page or a friend on our, our fun Jack's Hollow page. I'm inviting someone personally, I'm not saying, you know, the general public, hey, come on, we're not busy, because I don't want to do it. I don't want what happened the first year. It was nerve wracking for me. I went, where did all these people come from? You know, it's, but, so we don't want that kind of a thing. So, but I'm thinking, you know, the 304 cars or whatever the extra was is not going to make any traffic problems that I can see. Any other questions? I think. Right. Very done. Go ahead. Bob Paulson, uh, Tammy, first off, I want to offer my condolences on your loss of Bob. Thank you. He's a great man. Yes. It was very hard. Um, and you just kind of pointed out what, um, what I was suspecting when you were asking the people to go ahead and come on out is that you knew um, yep. that those slots were going to fill. I'm so sorry. Yep. So sorry. Um, the, um, Can you tell from your um, counts based on the sign up genius what kind of a percentage of drop off that you had on people not showing up? It was a large percent. I was surprised because I got so many emails that had said, Oh, you're full. I can't get in. I said, Well, I'm sorry, you know, and but I didn't get any that said, cancel you know so i could open that spot up it's just they decided not to come i'm sure they didn't think it was any big deal right or they forget that that's the night they signed up I and mean, there's many many reasons but so i was pretty surprised that first night i went wow okay it worked a little too good <laughs> um so um that's why we are asking for more because it did limit the amount of uh that we could do uh and it went so well. I don't see how asking for a few more is going to make that much difference. Okay. Yeah, the question, John DeGrand. Uh, I got a couple quick questions. Sure. So, the reservation thing is kind of a little bit loose. Where, I mean, my thing is if you get a larger group of people showing up in a half hour window. How do you meter them through the property without 
stacking up. Okay. So what we did that very first night, we were very strenuous on, we had the list of who was um, signed up. We literally asked their name, made sure they were on the list. After a a couple of nights, we didn't do that because there was no reason to do it. There was just no, you know, there was no crowd. Um, We hated having, you know, all that we did not to be seen just because people didn't show up. And so when you say loose, yeah, a little, but um, I didn't say, hey, general public, come on in. That I don't want that either. Um, it was if someone had messaged me on my page or on Jax Hollow's page and said, gosh, we really wanted to get in, you know, I, and I said, well, come on, because I, there is going to be enough room. So it wasn't just, you know, we did, we were stringent about, and that was the people that we said, yeah, come on. We counted every car. Mm. So um, I just, I think that it'll be fine to have a few more. Okay, so you're not like posting on there, hey, we short crowd tonight, come no, on now. we did not. Okay. We did not. And the other thing that I had was, if I can read my own notes here, oh, the what do you think the average time someone spends once they come onto the property to they go off the property? I mean, I know they can they can get out of their car and take pictures. They can, but probably only about half actually get out. It's usually the people who have young children with them and the kids are, you know, screaming and having fun. And we have a very large table that we have. I mean, little of everything, cupcakes and, you know, all these individual things that I go buy at Sam's. And we'll say, if you would like to have some hot cider, you can pull up in the horse pasture and park. Come on down if you would like to get any pictures by the props. I'm guessing 20 25 minutes, maybe by the time they get parked, come down and get some cider, take a few pictures and go. Um, really anybody that would hang around for any time or people we know, you know, um, we have, we even have family and friends who come from Texas. And so we have people who come just because it's a fun atmosphere, but um, general public that we don't know at all, half probably get out, mostly that have kids. And um, maybe 20, 25 minutes is my guess. Okay. And do you have someone up there directing traffic sort of? We do. That part too. Matter of fact, two or three people, because we'll stand there in literally every car we talk to. And we'll say, if you would like to um, get cider, if you would like to get the kids some candy, you can pull up in the horse pasture. I have signs, parking, exit, you know. And so, yes. And that helped a lot. We That sign up genius, we had a lot of volunteers and boy, did we need it because that helped a lot of people be able to give directions, you know, um, kid, well, people walking around scaring, you know, and that kind of stuff. So volunteers were very much appreciated. Um, it helped a lot. Great. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your uh information there uh at at this time we want to open up to uh the public comments uh is there anybody that would oh i'm sorry Mr. chair you need to officially open the public hearing at this point i'm sorry what at this point we need to officially open the public hearing okay i'll just say we're this what we're going to open the public hearing and receive public comment which i think i just did so i think we're probably okay what, what he said he was trying to say. yeah yeah so uh, if if we would want to officially open it up to public comments here uh it would be three minutes or less per individual i do have the list of people that signed in and so if anybody would like to say anything uh please uh come to the microphone give us your name and then we will go from there Hi, my name is Vicki Fisher. I live at 304, 30540 West 143rd. So I'm, uh, if you put up the picture of the property, I can point out where I live on in adjacent to that. So um, the, oh, okay, great. So this uh, navy blue area, this is all my property. This is my residence. This, my house is 40 feet from the property line. That's also where my bedroom is, right there. 
So I'm, I am the sensitive person that she referred to for um, the use of this property and the noise. And in the past, it has been very bad. Um, I've, the party has gone on until 2 and 4 in the morning. Um, the, the noise has been great. With the stipulations that occurred last year, it was greatly improved. And I greatly appreciated the staff going through those measures. I appreciated the signage that they put up. Tammy personally came out and put up um, something across my driveway because people were turning around. I'm, I'm the first driveway to the West and I get all of the turnarounds. And I still got turnarounds, but it was greatly reduced last year. Um, cleanup was pretty good. Um, most most days, I think toward the very last, there was a little bit, but not too significant. And it could have occurred whenever. Um, though I would like to see, though, that perhaps a stipulation be added as far as any generators or any lights. Um, I'm not saying it happened last year, but in the past, generators were allowed to run till two, three in the morning in lights. So I'd like to have definitely have a stipulation on those items that they all be shut down at 10 o'clock when the event is over. And that's one thing. Um, I also question what is the, who's going to monitor their, adhering to the conditions, because I realized staff helped do that last year. And um, this is setting, if you go with a five-year or 10-year permit, this is setting a precedence. And I know that there are others in the county that are also wanting to do such a thing. And so I think um, maybe limiting it to two or three years again would be a better thing to do, because you are setting a precedence. Um, and then I do have a question for staff. What triggers a revocation process? So, you know, you said that there could be that potential. But other than that, I do think that the event ran much better last year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for for your comments. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go through everybody first, and then we will address each one. Either there's a question or any revisions that are requested to be made. Uh, is there anybody else uh, that would like to make public comments and if you could just give us your name and address thank you my name is timothy crane i live on the property when you look at the map i am to the west of the Dolchell's property and also to the west of Vicky's property. I've lived there for 32 years almost. Uh, I have never had a problem with what they have done, even when the traffic was coming from both directions. The road was packed. <laughs> you know, there are so many kids that are out on the street causing problems, vandalism, these kids are so happy and so thrilled to hear them laugh and joke. My driveway is the second driveway from the Dolchell's property to the west. My property goes all the way back to their the back of their property. I've never had a problem. I've never had anybody come up my driveway. I've never had anybody. I mean, if somebody has to turn around, it's not a big deal, you know, come on people. This is, is not that bad. This gives a lot of things to, used to be Toys for Tots and now it's the Secret Santa. And if people will come out, have a good evening, have fun, enjoy it with their kids, what is the big deal? I don't understand why there's a problem with it. I mean, I could have 200 cars come up my driveway. I could care less if they don't vandalize my property. It's not a big deal to me. You know, if somebody needs to turn around, 
drive up my driveway and turn around. I don't care. But to see what they provide for these kids and what they provide out of their own pockets every year. We went to the party last year, the private party. I have never seen since the kind of displays that they had and everything and and the automated uh dummies and things that they had going on i was i was just flabbergasted i th i thought it was better than many many haunted houses that you pay good money <laughs> to go through i'm not that much of a halloween person but i enjoyed every minute of it and to see what they do and what they put out of their pocket for this event i think people can sit back and just kind of enjoy it. I do. I love hearing the kids laugh. And I intend to take my great grandkids this year to mm. it. So Thank I think it's fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to make any public comments? Mr. Chair. Yes, we might want to. We should probably check to see if there's anybody on Zoom that wishes to comment. Megan, is there anybody that that wishes to comment on Zoom? Or Hi, uh, this is Megan with the Johns County Planning staff. Currently, no one on Zoom has their hand raised, but we can give it a few seconds just to make sure they aren't trying to figure out how to raise their hand. It should be in the webinar controls at the bottom of your screen. There should be a button that says raise hand. I know we have about five members of the public on Zoom, so I just wanted to make sure. Okay, I'm still not seeing any, so I would say that there are no more public comments. All right, so... Any any further? Yeah, at this point, I, Mr. Chairman, Sean Pelley, it would be appropriate to ask if the applicant has any response to any of those comments. Yes. Thanks. Okay. I just wanted to say that um, we measured from our driveway, where is the entrance and the exit, to Vicki's, not only her fence, but to her house. And it's um, 300 feet with heavily wooded in between them. We have one small generator at the end of the driveway that runs rope lights. No spotlights, no anything like that. We have a couple of uh, those uh, solar lights that point up onto the skeletons there and the rope lights there. There's no search lights. There's no nothing. And. I don't even see how it's possible to hear that generator because it's new. It's one of those quiet generators. Um, and I'm telling you at five minutes till 10, because I'm tired, I am going down that driveway and I'm turning everything off. So I'm telling you probably 10 after 10, everything is off. So it's realized that even the rope light up there is off. So that we are closed. Um, the rope I put at the end of Vicky's driveway was at the street, about two foot. It would have been impossible for someone to turn around in that driveway. I just wanted to clarify that we did measurements and we did everything that we could to make sure that no one turned around in her driveway or caused her any um, grief at all. But I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Any further comments or questions? If there is not, then at this point, we're going to close. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Sean Penley again. I would also note, since there was questions of staff by one of the public comments, it also would be appropriate for staff to respond oh, to those yes. questions if we can to provide clarification. So there was a good question regarding enforcement of the activity. It's true, staff did inspect the property last year. However, that would not be a normal requirement of a CUP to do that. We did that because it was the first year. If directed and required, 
staff could go out and inspect again. However, uh, normally the way we enforce these types of events, just as with any other zoning action, staff responds based on any neighbor complaints. So if we receive any complaints regarding any activity for a zoning action, staff would respond. In this case, obviously the, in the evening, staff's not gonna be in the office uh, able to respond at that time. However, what we have done for events like this in the past, if we receive a complaint from the public that they're running past their hours of operation or any other activity that's not meeting the, the stipulations, staff would do an inspection on another night where we would monitor that. We have done that in the past for other events. So staff would certainly do that and we would continue to do that. We would respond to any neighbor complaints. So I just wanted to add that uh, answer to that question. And Mr. Chair, just to add on to that, yeah, staff would, would investigate and then uh, uh, compile a report on that, report back if it's, if, if it's, if it's a one-time issue, a lapse of something, uh, that that's one one item, but if it's a continued uh, kind of a blatant disregard for the stipulation, then we would look at bringing it back to the the board for the revocation process. So those are very specific process that yes, in place it's, it's, to be able it's very well prescribed to, in our in our correct right if there are issues yeah and one time or ongoing. Right. And also staff does contact the applicant too, by the way, anything we do monitor, we let the applicant know we're going to come out and inspect based on any complaints we've received. We will notify the applicant. We go out and we visit the site. We notify them, let them know we're inspecting. And then we would report any violations that were observed. We we have done that for other events, not, not this one, but other events. If we monitor a, a violation, we do notify the applicant and we state what it is that was a problem and that they do need to correct it we would not immediately initiate a revocation, which was our question too. However, that is an option. If there are repeated violations, as Mr. Leipzig mentioned, we could ultimately staff could bring this matter back before the board into a revocation. However, that would be only after there's repeated violations. Okay. We give the applicant an opportunity to address the, uh, the any violations and then act accordingly from there on. Thank you for the clarification. All right, so any more questions or comments? At this point, then we will close the uh, public comments. Thank you for coming tonight and sharing. We do appreciate that. Uh, at this point, just a discussion of the application by our board. Um, is there anything else that you would like to discuss now that you have information from both the applicant and the public. Sure, John DeGran. I, I, I'll throw this out because I'm not sure how I really feel about it, actually. Um, the, apparently, the last visitors will be admitted at 10 p.m., so you're not going to shut it down exactly at 10 o'clock. Those people have time to clear the property, do their do their drive down and everything. Would it be appropriate for this group to say, okay, but we do have a lights out at 10 30, 11? You know, I don't, I'm just throwing that out there to see what you guys think. I see what you're saying. It does say, you know, after 10 o'clock, but it would take, if it takes the average of the 25 20. minutes, then by 10 30, that would be generators off, lights out, whatever that looks like. Does that sound, is that, I mean, did, do you see that as well? I, yeah, I agree. Bob Paulson, I've got a kind of a flip side of that. Um, possibly reduce the um, last admittance to 9.30, 9.45, something like that. Then give the grace period to like 10.15 to get, you know, the last person out. Then you've got you know, volunteers and everything need to gather up, get their stuff shut down and get out. Right. right. That'll take extra time as well. So Right. So I'm thinking, you know, possibly amend or at least not necessarily amend, but have an expectation to cut off the. Um, um, I think it'd be good to define that because, earlier. you know, so that we're all understanding is you know is it 9 45 or 10 o'clock and then 
lights out generators off by 1030 at the latest. I mean, it, it, does that, do we need to amend anything or how, how would we need to address that? Yeah. Terry at, well, you guys, I do believe we would have to amend the time frame. Yes, we can't have an expectation. It has to be um, in writing that we would expect a last entrance closure of, you know, throw this out 930 and for the volunteers to be gone and lights out by 10. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Sean Penley, planning staff, that is correct. If the board would like, if someone would like to make a motion to amend any stipulation, you could do that as a motion. Then there would have to be a second. You have to vote on that amendment. And then the, the stipulation could be amended if there's an agreement to do that. So that would be a discussion item. And then if somebody wants to make a motion to amend any one of these stipulations, you could do that however you would like. Then you make a then you would vote on that particular amendment. Can we allow the applicant to make a comment based on our discussion or no? Mr. Chairman or Vice Chair, yes, you could you could do that. That certainly would be appropriate. Before we do that, can right. I add to that comment? If, sure. if, if you don't mind, we're going to let him speak first and then we'll... we'll Rod, allow Roger you. Spears. Yeah. Um, I guess I look back at last year and we've had the, the neighbor has said that last year went much, much better. Staff was there and said there were no problems last year. Um, we had the person that came in uh, with an email comment that said last year was great. Yeah. Similar experience. And also, and, yeah. and our applicant has said that at 10 o'clock, she goes down and ensures that the gates closed. The lights are going off, shutting down the, the entrance. I'm, I'm not overly concerned with the 20 minutes uh, or so of time for the visitors that are there to clear because we don't know with the process did the last visitor come in at 10 o'clock or did the last visitor come in at 930? Right. Did they come in at 915 or 945? We're not controlling right. the flow of people in. So I, I, I would, I would think leave it alone because if you start messing with the duration of the time, it gets back into the, the count, the number of half hour slots that are in sign up genius, it affects the total throughput count. Sure. It gets, it's going to get, a lot it's going to get tangled up. Yes, sir. I, I, I would say leave it at, at 10 o'clock with the stipulation that they made that she says she's tired by then anyway and is ready for people to, to go home. All right. Yes, Michelle. This is Michelle Leininger. If you calculate it out, that's eight time slots per night from six to 10. So your last time slot is 930. Um, that's why it's no new people after 10. Um, that allows people to visitors to get out. So if you if you take those those eight time slots times it by the 38 that's where the um, 304 um, comes from if you want to clarify it or say it differently um, that can be included in the motion that was helpful in itself yeah yeah i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's math you know it works every time so sir would you like to share then at this point if you could just share your name and address. My name is Don Dolshaw. I live at uh, 30450 West 143rd Street in Gardner. The property owner, Tammy, is my mom. Um, and I just wanted to point out that the generator we're talking about, as uh, had been discussed a little earlier, as of last year, we're using one that I'd be very surprised if you could hear it from more than 20 feet away. Um, so I don't really see how that could be a concern for any neighbor. Um, and the lights are literally just some rope lights that spell out Jack's Hollow above an archway and a couple of small solar lights that can only be seen from direct the end of our driveway, which is also not visible from a neighbor's house. Uh, so I just wanted to point out that the, that those specifics, I don't really think it's of that. And also the, we're already starting our, uh, the drive through probably a little earlier than we'd like to, like 
an hour and a half or two hours before it gets dark to make sure we can get as many people through as possible. So, uh, yeah, if we, changing it to having everybody out by 930 and everything off by 930 would cut into that even more because we can't really start any earlier than we are. Sure. Okay. Thank you. That's all I've got. Yes. She wants, uh, um, Vicki wants to, she has another comment in regards to what she's heard. Vicki Fisher. Um, when I made that comment about the generators and the noise and the lights, that was prior years. I wasn't saying last year. But I do like to see the stipulation because they do add on every year. Things can change. And that's why I would like to have a stipulation that we don't see strobe lights or, or anything because it has a um, not necessarily strobe lights, but generators have gone on uh, many, many hours until the hours of the morning. I guess it was just because they were waiting for the gas to run out of the generators. I don't know why, but it was it has happened in prior years. And I, I really oppose this type of um, comment or because I, I witnessed it. It's just like somebody turning around in my driveway. I witness it. So... Okay. They can say what they want, but I witnessed it. So anyway, um, but, you know, I, I'm not trying to shut them down. I do. I, I, you have to realize that um, any comment I make, I may end up with repercussions if they don't like the comments I make here. So I, I try to be very diplomatic and, and I am trying to be diplomatic. And, and I understand that this is what it's for, and I'm, I appreciate the, what it's being done for. And they do have a wonderful party. It's just, you know, I want to preserve my rights and my, you know, the reason why I moved to the country longer, many, many, many years ago. So anyway, this is a public forum, and I gave my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the zoning board, from staff? Yes. Just wanted to point out um, that there are stipulations in the recommendation for light spillage um, shall not occur off site. No strobe lights shall be visible off site. No uh, PA systems or speakers. Um, so those are currently included in the, in the stipulations so it is it, it is right there okay yeah there's nothing about a generator but yeah. as far as the a pa and lights one of the recommendation session okay thank you all right i think and we're okay on zoom and everything everybody is good that way as well so uh, at this point we're going to close the public comments and then uh, we're going to just the discussion side on on the board. Is there anything as far as board members, any additional discussion that that you feel like we need to have? I, I would. I've, I've been looking at the numbers a little bit, and you, you bear with me. I'm an engineer, so I, I look I at it. I look at the numbers and we forgive you no. and, and run these. <laughs> things out but you know the the um the 240 vehicles to the 504 that was requested is about a hundred percent increase it's about double almost but from 167 up to the 304 is about a an 82 percent increase over what they had as a peak mm -hmm. but if you look at 240 to 304, the, the 240 being the throughput, the, the slots per night, um, it's only a 25% increase in, in traffic flow. It's Michelle's eight, eight, vehic or, uh, eight slots at 38 minutes. I'm, I'm thinking maybe cheat up a little bit from that, not go all the way to the 504. But if we went to 45 slots, that would be a total of 360 instead of 304. It kind of gets you about halfway up. 
gives about half what they were asking. And then I think I think Terry was talking about a, a stair step arrangement somehow that it would have a provision for ratcheting up. But from Michelle's comment earlier, I think th that requires a application for revision uh, from the applicant. You can't just have a, it's hard to have an automatic with checks and balances in it. You can build it into your uh, motion with the, with the recommendation and the stipulations. Um, if that's something you're uh, looking at doing, we can certainly figure it out where, you know, 2023, you get X number, 2024, you get X number. It would have to be per year to incrementally be. till we get to that number. Is that, would that be something that that's, would I, think make that, sense? I think that would be a, an improvement. Um, yeah. Terry at will here. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with trying to come up with a good stair step that we can build in, but with the stipulation that if we are starting to see issues, um, we're going to have to halt the stair stepping. So in all honesty, I I'm good with running it up a um, hundred for this next year. And so if they were going to double it, then, you know, the next year you could run it up another hundred. And then as long as there's no issues that third year, take it to the balance of the 500 with the caveat that there are no issues, no light spillage, no traffic problems, and that all of the neighbors, you know, nobody's complaining and, and everybody's good with it. I'm fine with stair-stepping that. Donna Gutzman, maybe the easier solution, and this is just throwing this out there, would be instead of trying to do a stair step and amend everything is just to reduce the conditional use permit to two or three years. And then that way it can be revisited again at that time after they've gone through to another two or three years. That option Absolutely. instead of the five years. Three sixty instead of three hundred four. Three sixty this year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The discussion is is that we would uh, reduce from five to three, but we would increase to three sixty for those three years, and so we would just I. Uh, uh, I'm going to recommend or move an amendment. to amend. Yes. Move to amend. Is that acceptable or is that? Yes, I think it'd be appropriate for the board, someone to make a motion to amend a specific stipulation and, and then state exactly how you request it to be amended. Then you vote on that amendment. You're, you're essentially a voting on the action. Say you're recommending approval with an amendment to stipulation. And note what amendment you want to make each. So one. if somebody, whatever, yeah, you would have to make an amendment. You would have to make a a note to each stipulation you're requesting to amend. Then somebody have to second it, and then we vote on it. Okay. So. Is there a Not motion to me. amend? I move to amend the conditional use permit to a term of three years instead of five years. So we have a okay. second. We have a motion uh, and a second. Mo there's a motion and a second. Is that the only amendment? Is there another? Did you want to do them separate? I, you thought, you can do I, thought, I heard you separate. say do them separately, but you, do we? You could do it that way, but I think we're making a motion to approve this. I think it can be worked together. Uh, it probably would make sense to approve it, each one, and vote on it separately. I think that makes sense. And then to make a second amendment. I think that's correct. So we'll vote. I So Ms. Cross, by the way, Ms. Cross stepped up for a minute. So I'll, I will go ahead and take a roll call on this amendment. So I'll keep looking and keep track of these. So uh, John DeGram? 
So there's a motion and a second. So we'll call for a roll on this amendment for stipulation for the term for the CEP to five to three years, correct? Okay. John DeGrand? Aye. Jeff Huff? Aye. Terry Atwell? Aye. Donna Getzman? Aye. Bob Paulson? Aye. And Roger Spears? Aye. Okay, so uh, that amendment is approved. Is a motion to approve is uh, uh, carries forward. Now, are there any other? It'd be appropriate to ask for if there's any other. Are there any there? other motions? I would make a motion that I'm sorry, Roger Spears. Um, I would make a motion that uh, in the stipulation item five, no more than 38 vehicles shall visit the site for every half hour, be increased to 45, which would be a total of 360 vehicles per night of the event. Are those two different motions, are you saying? Or is, is there a, is there a, a second? second? So maybe we need, we a, need second. a second. I'll second that one too. We have so a, a motion, motion and a second. second. So we'll call roll on uh, roll call on that amendment to stipulation number five. John DeGrand? Aye. Jeff Huff? Aye. Terry Atwell? No, I want it left at 340. Donna Getzman? Aye. Bob Paulson? And Roger Spears. Aye. So I have five votes in favor and one opposed. So that motion carries for amendment of stipulation number five. All right. Hey, hey Sean, hold on. This is Terry. So uh, like I say, I'm sorry. I'm sitting in my car because I had a, a public hearing. So was the original uh, 240 or 260? 240. 240. Okay. okay. I stand then. Okay, so if there's no other amendments, I believe that uh, carries forward for approval. So, um, hey, uh, Sean. Amendment. So, this oh, is Megan with the planning department. I just want to remind everyone when you're making a motion and a second, please state your name um, and the action that you're making so that it can be um, recorded for the record hmm. and it will be um, in our minutes just for. Uh, historical purposes. And then, Michelle, you had said that there was a specific verbiage that you... Oh, right here. Page and there we go. On page 13. Uh, all right. So, the proposed motions, I move to approve the application number W... 23304 CUP LE, a conditional use permit renewal for a seasonal haunted drive through event with a three year term at 30450 West 143rd Street, subject to the stipulations and for the reasons set forth in the staff report. I have a second. Who uh, say your name and then second? Donna Getzman, second. And Mr. Chairman, Sean Penley, and I would also add to you note that you're recommending approval with the amendments to stipulations four or two and five as previously voted, correct? So you're making this motion with those amendments. Okay. So now we'll take a roll call on the CUP approval with the amendments to item to stipulation number two and five. John DeGrand? Aye. John, F point of information, please. Yes. We talked earlier about the period of time, the three years needing to be extended by a month if you want it to include the event of the third year, correct? Oh, please. That was, I, a, I, that was a conversation, but nobody made that specific correction to amend that date. So that was not on the motion for approval. It was just a motion for three years. Three year, three event cycles, maybe instead. But I, I, my understanding is that it's for three years of the event. 
but it's, but, but it's from the date is well, where you're saying. Once again, Mass, you'll get 23, 24, and 25 Halloween on a three-year CUP. Mr. Roger Spears, I, I don't think that's right. I believe that it is um, it is dated from the approval by the county commission, is it? which will expire before the Halloween of the third year. But this okay, it's kind of a math thing. This year is year zero. Twenty, you'll get Halloween of 23, 24, and twenty five. We'll get so they'll we'll get, get three, twenty Halloweens out of a three year permit. Correct. Three three years from this date would be 2026. So you would get this year 2023, 2024, and 2025. They would have approval for three years of CUP. It's approval based on the date of approval by BOCC. So this this is going to go forward in BOCC in September of 2023. So it will expire in 2026, 2026. before Halloween. Right. So they would have so to renew they, at year three. They would have period to. needs to be, would have to be, if you want to include the third Halloween, would have to be three years and two months. No, nope. they're going to get approval for this year for 2023. They're going to get approval for 2024 and 2025 as it's been recommended. Okay. Yeah, so they will have three years. I see what you're saying, because if we approve it on, you know, August... 18th and then that's next august is one year august at august but that's before halloween so i i what i feel like is in the how it is presented is that it's for three of the three years of events and not three years from the date even though it does say that i i do, do we need to amend that or are we okay with the the word okay Okay, as long as we understand, <laughs> I think that that we will be fine. Yes, sir. And Mr. Chairman, just Jay Leipzig, just a point of clarification: all of these comments and part uh, part of the public record, the board will review that as well. So that these comments are always very helpful in terms of your reasoning, your your rationale for the motions, rationale for the for the term. All of those things will be part of that public record as well. So that's captured. So, but um, to your to your point, yes, you have three seasons and. Uh, 23, 24, 25. From the date of meeting. Yeah. That's my concern. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. So, Mr. Okay. Chairman, Sean Penley, again, I, I'll continue with the final roll call vote here. So we, we've amended stipulations two and five, and I think you had the motion to approve with those amendments. So I'll do the final roll call. So I believe John DeGrand voted yes. We Next is Jeff Huff. Aye. Terry Atwell? No. Donna Getzman? Aye. Bob Paulson? Aye. And Roger Spears? Aye. So that carries forward with a vote of five to one for recommending approval of amendments to stipulations two and five. And we would note that um, Michelle Leiniger will note the date for this to be considered by the Board of County Commissioners. This will go before the Board of County Commissioners at their September 7, September 14th, 2023 meeting, which is held here in this room at uh, the County Administration Building at 111 South Cherry Street. Meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. Okay. Very good. Do I gavel us out or how do I do that? Yeah, other business. <laughs> oh, here we go. Announcer board, no to chairman zoning board. Too. Oh, we are at adjournment. Uh, oh, you asked for someone just makes uh, any other make business to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Donna Getzman, I move to adjourn. I'll second that. Bob Paulson. Um, all of those approve? Uh, Aye. Bye. We are adjourned. <laughs>